Hello, my friends, my Tanzunians. How are you? Welcome back to yet another fantastic Tanzu Tuesdays. I'm still a little tired, Paul. I'll be honest. I'm still a little tired from the epic spring one that we had last week, two days. Um, and then the long weekend was nice to recover from it, but right. I kind of went into that long weekend slump and it's like, oh yeah, we've got to come back on Tuesday and do things. So, uh, you know, so yeah. we had an extra long weekend because we had the company ride vacation on Friday. That's right. So like Friday. after four days off, I really yeah. want to have a fifth day. That's right. It's, I think that's only fair. We'll yeah. have to kind of talk to the our manager about that one. <laughs> With us today is Brian McLean. Hello, sir. How are you? Howdy, howdy. How's it going? Long time on the other side. Now you're presenting. This is exciting. We always love being able to bring our viewers on to actually present. Yeah. Am I the first one to make the uh, long time viewer first time caller joke? Or We, we had Deshaun. Oh, uh, I don't <laughs> think right. Deshaun Carter That's made right. the joke. He, he was the, as far as I know, he was the first from the other side, but I do appreciate the long time listener, first time caller. That's very maybe good. That's, maybe that's where I was thinking of it. Yeah, it's a classic. It's great. It's a, it's, a, it's a winner every time. Um, have you ever called a new radio show? I've, I've actually never done that. I don't think I did. I know I, I specifically remember uh, in school, one of my friends did because we won tickets to a concert. But other than that, I don't think I personally did. Right. You, yeah. My wife, apparently, before I mean, this was before we were even dating and stuff. She mm-hmm. would win concert tickets and do stuff all the time. And I just I never really was a radio listener growing up. Because, you know, CDs were so – I would make tapes and then, of course, make CDs. The mix. Oh, man, that was that was the thing. Raise yeah, your hand yeah. if you made a, a mixtape for a, a lady in your life or a special <laughs> These things were great. So anyway, so Did yes. Do you remember, you. Bob, when you were first burning those CDs and they were so delicate that you had to tell everyone in the house not to move? And don't the move. CD had finished. Don't even look at it. Working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember my first like CD disc man. Uh, that sorry, Sony, if it's copyright, and I can't say that. <laughs> but the uh, first disc man that had like the kind of five seconds that it mm-hmm. would skip ahead, so you could shake it for like five seconds, and then you wouldn't have a problem. Oh man, that was that was a thing. Anyway, technology. That's why we're here. <laughs> It's incredible. Well, let's get through our uh, announcements real quick. Uh, We have only a few because the big one, which was spring one, which was last week, I don't know if I mentioned, uh, was last week, September 2nd and 3rd. It was an incredible time. Uh, And all of those, uh, all the videos, I think right now the main stage videos, they're up online if you go to springone.io. And then all the tracks with all the presentations on it will be going up soon, either sometime later this week or early next week. So if you missed or you were watching some stuff, but you couldn't watch others, go check out springone.io and you can catch up on all that amazing content. Uh, Paul, you emceed the platforms track. I did, that's right. The cloud native architecture or cloud native platforms. I can't even remember the track yeah. name. It was so long ago. <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> Uh, but four that, days of weekend since that happened. That's right. And, and and Tiffany was there. And that's why she's not even here. She already chose to not, not be here. She's like, look, I'm taking five days off. So she was the smart one. She was the so, smart one. Tiffany, good on you. Good on you, mate. Um, yeah, and I did the beginner spawn one. And that one was great. And then Cora jumped in for a couple hours. Cora, one of our previous guests also on our team, the uh, advocacy team. So, yeah, it was it was all hands on deck, being in front of that computer and and – Actually, I didn't have that many technical issues, which was really nice. We just had a couple, couple little glitches, but nothing too crazy. So, yeah, ours uh, were really smooth as well. I don't think we had, uh, we had, I think one where the person dropped out for a minute, and we had a couple of like brief pauses and stuff. But otherwise, like, yeah, yeah. Shout out I mean, to the event a, team that really yeah. helped out. They were great. They were really yeah. great. And, and Brian, think, did you? Oh, good. I was going to say, I think it was a really good choice to use uh, like Zoom as the dial-in medium for the speakers because yes. Like everyone already knows how to use Zoom right. and it's already reasonably well proven to be stable. Although that they did have that major outage like two weeks ago. It would have been uh, that quite the shock timing. if that, that would have been happened <laughs> mid, mid-conference. I think Mother Dragons would have literally had a heart attack. Like her uh-huh. heart would have leapt out of her body and then yeah. fl- fleed, flo- flown down the street, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I would have felt uh, and- the intensity of the glare from here. Yes. And uh, Spencer, hello. You presented. You did a great job on, on my track. Uh, Brian, did you present as well? 
Uh, I did not. I've presented the last two or three spring ones, but what? not this one. <laughs> Ooh, say <laughs> friggin' <edit. laughs> No, well, no, I'm I, sure I, it was I, not a reflection on you. I, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll admit, I don't think I submitted anything this year, so that's on me. So safe, very safe, <laughs> safe, safe response. Well, and I know that like last year live, I think there was like 13 different tracks, and this year there was only five. So. Yeah. They, they also just really pared it down, which was great. And I think it made sense. And we had, I'll put this out there, 41,000 people register and over 40,000 people watching at one time, yeah, which like never incredible. happens at a live event. Like you expect maybe a third, if you're lucky, half will watch, but it was a great, it was unbelievable. So thank you community for showing up and I hope you all learned something. Uh, okay, we just need so to get we'll 40,000 oh. viewers onto our uh, Twitch channel. Right. Which, speaking of which, subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Right. We always appreciate the subscriptions. We're only uh, three thousand nine hundred and eighty-six away, so you know we're getting close. We're getting not close. Too bad. <laughs> you mean thirty-nine thousand? Um, yes, that's that is what I meant. That was yeah. Not three thousand. I was like, wow, we're doing really great. <laughs> um, and speaking of a uh, little bit more, Spring One Tour, which, as you know, we've been touting, it's a, it's a monthly uh, two-day event. Uh, this month, we're going to be. It's just going to be one day, and we're going to be bringing back uh, some of the other people from the spring one it show. And we're just going to do kind of a round table fireside chat, talking about highlights and whatnot of spring one. So up all your game for the next couple of weeks. I don't have the exact date. I know Tasha said it last week, but I don't remember. It's, it's going to be somewhere like the third week of September. We'll go, but you know that. where people can go to find out. Well, it's not, a, what I'm saying is it's not on spring one tour.io, which is really, uh. Right. Well, if where... people if people go to tanzu.tv and keep an eye on it, when the there details are up, they'll be able to we, see. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, and then, of course, our the VMware's enormous show, VMworld. It's happening at the end of this month, September 29th through October 1st. Three days. Paul will be presenting, which we're excited about. And uh, yeah, that's that's just gonna like spring one was kind of your top and middle layer and this is going to be just all the whole stack obviously a lot of it on the infrastructure a lot of them you know what vmware has made their money on but uh they're 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 adding all the the tanzu stuff is has really opened up their portfolio so it'd be great so go yeah. go check that out i think yeah. i think like a hundred thousand people go to that live some or, some ridiculously large yeah. number of people so probably so, like half a million people virtual if, if spring <laughs> is any uh indication and especially because it's free too, right? You don't have to travel. You don't have to rent a super, you know, super expensive hotel right. in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, so anyway, so so check that out at vmworld.com. And then Paul, you have one more announcement. I do. Oh yeah, I do. That's right. Uh, <laughs> this Friday at one o'clock <laughs> Pacific time. Are you right there, Bob? Sorry, I just thought that was really, it was, I know, but it was really good delivery. <laughs> so anyway, You're I welcome. appreciate good delivery. <laughs> well, thanks for ruining my delivery. <laughs> now I'm, I'm totally lost. What was I saying? Oh I'm yeah, gonna... this Friday at one o'clock, uh, Cora and myself will be doing uh, our very first uh, TGIK. So thank God it's Kubernetes. Uh, is a show that uh, Joe Beta and a bunch of the original uh, Heptio folks started and have continued on as VMware. Um, Cora and I will be hosting that. Um, yeah, we'll be talking about uh, validating admission controller webhooks, which is all very exciting. Ooh. So if you want to, uh, if you want to ensure that people are doing the right thing and not just yoloing like bad stuff into Kubernetes. It's uh, what you do. You use validating webhook, validating admission controller webhooks. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll be diving into those as well as just doing the usual roundup of Kubernetes stuff. Yeah. That sounds great. Friday at one o'clock uh, Pacific time on YouTube. Um, oh, that's right. And if yeah, you go so... to tgik.io slash live, uh, on Friday, that will take you to the right place. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the only time that I really have laughed hard at y YOLO is when a friend of mine, Michael Smith, said he wanted to open up a Froyo place called YOLO Froyo. And I just really thought that was spot on. That was the best. Yeah. So, yeah, don't that, YOLO. That, that, is, that is hash brown the best. 
<laughs> don't YOLO your Kubernetes, only YOLO your Froyo. All right, that's the, that's the lesson we're learning today. That is the lesson we're learning. All right, so with that, Brian, let's bring you back into the fold. Thank you for unmuting because you are professional and I am not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I remember about 50% of the time, so. It's all right. <laughs> uh, so we, yeah, 50% 50, 50 of the time, it works every time. I exactly, guess. exactly. Line in the math. <laughs> So uh, how how are you doing? How are you feeling? Not too bad, you know. I I can't complain. How are you doing? We're we're holding it together <laughs> piece by piece. California, as I was saying earlier, is just particularly the Bay Area is is a treasure trove of terribleness. Yeah. And I don't pay these kind of property taxes to live here. That's <laughs> so I need to talk to the manager or somebody. Uh, but no, I mean we're fine. We're obviously the whole family is healthy and safe and. The earthquake that we had the two days ago did remind us like, oh, yeah, and the earth can shake at any point in time during these fires and pandemic and other things. So, uh, but yeah, when the dogs don't even move, it's not a big earthquake. Like the dogs didn't even that's wake good. up. So I was like, well, oh, OK, I guess we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So, yeah. I'm yeah. Gl glad to hear your dogs were undisturbed. Right. And, and honestly. <laughs> If they don't get their prerequisite 17 to 18 hours of sleep a day, they are just a handful. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one asleep at my feet right now. She's, here she is. Look at this. <laughs> like the tongue. Monkey. <laughs> yeah. Good girl. Okay. Good night. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. Yeah. Oh. You're right. <laughs> That's her saying, don't touch me, dad. I was doing stuff. <laughs> All right, so uh, so let's talk about what you're going to be presenting today. This is really, especially since we're on Twitch, so this is a really cool uh, thing to kind of talk. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I kind of I guess I want to preface this by saying uh, we, this is what episode 22, I believe. Um, what for? for tw I know it's it's been what? going like crazy. Wow. Someone Incredible. correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, so for quickly 20, going adding the math. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so for 21 episodes, that means the viewers have gotten these like super masters of their craft, you know, like really, di you know, diving deep on something that they know everything about. Right. Um, I've been really inspired by a lot of those episodes. And, and there's probably three or four topics I was going to touch on today that are topics that were covered on Tanzu Tuesday. Uh, and we are going to build a Twitch bot. So. You know, bot that's gonna sit and chat and and respond to commands. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it, it should be really fun. You know, we're gonna be looking at Reactive Spring. We're gonna be uh, packaging it up using some of the stuff added in Spring 2.3 into a container. We're gonna be gathering metrics uh, with Prometheus and Grafana. So kind of like this uh, smorgasbord of uh, things that I've kind of learned along the way from this show. So hopefully it's interesting. This is a, this is incredible because a i hope everyone's paying attention hope you're taking notes <laughs> <laughs> it's like the B, midterm. Yes, put, yeah. exactly putting it all together in an actual project this is great uh and so i mean paul do you have anything else to say i think we should just let uh, it go. I, I wasn't paying attention i was too busy <laughs> googling for what episode we were up to <laughs> and it is 22 <laughs> all right <laughs> well then with that brian the floor is yours enjoy my friend cool um i'll go ahead and uh i learned this little trick by the way where uh, instead of asking if you can see my screen, I learned to just share a screen, and if people can't see it, they yell at you. Uh, so I'm assuming a, you can see really my screen. It's a really good motto. Yeah, it's kind of the just do it and then ask for forgiveness later or whatever. Ask for forgiveness. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, so so like I said, you know, I, I think this kind of dates back to the very first episode of Tanzu Tuesday where uh, Josh Long was talking about um, reactive spring. Um, I think very soon after Spencer Gibb uh, covered some some uh, topics close to that. Mario Gray did a uh, presentation on testing Reactive. So there were there was a lot of sessions around Reactive Spring that I thought was just really really cool. And I thought you know why don't I try to learn this? Um, but I'm one of those people that really needs like something concrete or something like uh, tangible to build to to really learn something. So I was sitting there maybe two days later, three days later, trying to figure out what to build. And I had on my other monitor, I had one of my favorite Twitch streamers up. Um, and he has a, a bot in his chat. And, and these are pretty similar. If, if you don't watch a lot of Twitch, a lot of these streamers will have bots in their chat while, uh, while they're streaming. They'll do things like uh, post periodic messages. So events coming up, 
um, their latest YouTube video, a bunch of different things. Uh, and they'll also respond to commands so that you could say something like exclamation mark uptime and they'll say how long the uh, streamer has been live for. Um, at the same time, the viewer, the, the streamer I was watching, they had about it was something around 18 to 20,000 viewers. Um, so they're, they're a pretty big streamer. Um, there's definitely bigger out there, but it, it's by all means is a big stream. Um, and I mean, that's not Tanzu TV numbers or anything. I mean, not good. quite, but it's, it's, you know, we, we all have to start somewhere. We have to start <laughs> somewhere. Um, so, so I was looking at the chat and, and, you know, for just like a normal streamer that streams like six to eight hours a day, um, you know, not really doing anything special. They were getting maybe 30, 40 messages a second in chat. I flipped over to another channel and it was actually the, um, uh, this was just last week, the NVIDIA event that just happened where they kind of showed off all their new graphics card. They had over a hundred thousand viewers and it was just messages on messages on messages. It, it was hundreds of messages a second, if not more. And I made the realization, I'm like, you know what? The, these bots are going to have to sit there and look at every one of these messages in real time as they come through. And I was like, this could be really interesting to see how, um, you know, Project Reactor and, and, and Reactive Spring kind of hold up to this. So I thought, let's build a Twitch bot with it. And uh, of course, the, the very first thing I had to figure out was um, how, you know, uh, was there an API that I had to... to query was there you know was it web sockets was it some you know special uh, uh communication protocol and uh I, I looked at the docs did some reading and it turns out it's just irc um you know i i don't want to i don't want to be reductive in the work that twitch has done because they've done a lot of work for their their chat back end and um technically speaking it's more than irc there's a lot of work that went in there to the client to the person connecting to that chat it's IRC. You open up a socket, you read to it, you write from it. Um, it's all in plain text. It's, you know, pretty uh, straightforward. Um, and in now, fact, is it the actual IRC protocol or is it just a facsimile of? It is presented as the IRC protocol. So you can actually connect an IRC client, um, like oh, any wow. given IRC client to it. Um, and it'll work. Um, there, there's some special commands. And I, I think a lot of these actually overlap with um, you know, it's kind of the, the standard IRC commands. Um, but even, even Twitch's servers, they're pretty limited in the commands you need to know. So, you know, if I connect to the server to authenticate, I just got to give it my username and my, my nickname. Um, so I do this by saying pass space OAuth colon, and then, a, a OAuth token that I've generated earlier, give it my username with uh, Nick space and then my username, and then I'm on the server. Um, if I want to join a streamer's channel, I just type join, you know, pound sign channel name. So for this, I'd say join pound sign VMware Tanzu. And that's enough to start reading messages. Um, and then if you want to write messages, it's just sending a private message to that channel. Uh, by the way, I, I thought this was kind of funny. This isn't a typo here where I put the space, uh, space colon and then no space for the message. That's actually the, the protocol. Um, if you're implementing this yourself and wondering why it's not working, take a look at that. Um, I may have gotten caught up on that a little much. Uh, and then with that, you're, you're reading and writing messages to a, a streamer's channel. Um, so what was that, four commands? Uh, there's really only one other uh, command you need to know, which is every five minutes, the server is going to send you a, um, a ping command, and you just send back Pong. And this is like a standard... Uh, heartbeat just to make sure any stale connections are getting closed up um, and that's it that's that's all you need to know for the for the um, twitch chat interface and there's a few other things with metadata and stuff but if you think about um, as a viewer if you're viewing twitch on the website and you're a moderator for example you need to issue commands like time people out or um, you know grant mod status to other other people you're issuing these commands in the chat so your bot, if you want to give it that capability, it's just sending these as messages to your uh, to that same chat. Um, the the actual interface itself is pretty pretty small. So I have this code here. Um, I'm gonna I'm not doing this from complete scratch because we'd be here all day with me trying to remember how certain things work. Um, but I want to break this down to a few different things here. So. Um, 
let's look at just first connecting to and, and authenticating to the server. Um, I won't go through this line by line, but we can see I've got, for example, um, these three uh, environment variables I'm pulling in. These are the OAuth token. These are uh, the nickname I'm going to authenticate with, the channel I want to connect to. These are the three things that we kind of saw in those commands that I need to provide um, to join a channel. Uh, and then I'm creating a new Twitch spot, which we'll take a look at. I call authorize and I call it join channel. Uh, and actually, while I'm doing this, let me bring up my chat over here just so I'm not missing anything. All right. Cool. So let's let's dig down into this. So first, I'm creating a, a, a Twitch bot object here. So we have the constructor here. Um, a lot of this is kind of extra stuff. This is actually all around metrics, which we'll look into a little bit later. Um, but in here, I'm creating a yet another object I defined called an IRC connection. So if we go one further down, we can see what we're doing here is actually just opening a socket. We're getting the input and output streams like we would a, a standard socket. Uh, and then this is our first kind of glimpse at reactive programming in Java here. So I'm saying take that uh, uh, buffered reader that I've gotten for the, uh, for the input from the stream turn it into a stream object and then turn that into a flux. So I'll admit, I, I did some digging around. I did some asking around to fully clarify if I'm right on this, but um, if I would leave this as a stream, we can iterate over this and, you know, as things are coming into, we can pull it out if we want and set up, you know, kind of a, a processing loop or, or however you want to think about it. But doing it this as a flux, um, this can kind of be thought of as the producer in a producer-consumer relationship. This is going to, uh, every time a new message is, is put on this flux, it's going to notify our consumer. Uh, which we can see, if we go back to our Twitch bot and we look at the uh, authorize method, which was the next method we called, we can see I'm just writing to that socket uh, those same two pass and nick commands that we pointed out. Um, and then here I get that flux from my connection. Um, I got a couple extra things here, which I'll describe. I'm, I'm enabling metrics on this again, which we'll look at kind of near the end here. Um, I'm telling it to subscribe on a different scheduler here. And again, I did a lot of reading on this, but the most basic way I can put this as I understood it was, uh, if I would just say subscribe, like, you know, flux dot subscribe, um, that would be subscribing on whatever thread the subscribe method was called on. In this case, the main application thread, giving it the subscribe on with this schedulers dot parallel. This is saying I'm spinning up a new thread per core on my machine. And that's going to handle every time there's a new message, um, on this subscription. And then I call subscribe, which takes in a, uh, method with one, um, one parameter. So I've named this, uh, that parameter message. And I just say for every message I get call process message in this class. So, um, let's, let's just kind of pause there because, you know, again, me being a beginner, I, I looked at this and I was like, okay, this was kind of a lot to happen. So we opened a socket to the IRC server, standard TCP socket. We created a stream from that socket, from that, from the uh, buffer reader from that socket. And we turn that stream into a flux for our producer. We then say subscribe to that to create a consumer. And for every message that that flux produces, we're going to call this method uh, process message, um, which we can take a look at. Um, so these are a couple of the other things I, I mentioned earlier. Um, these are kind of the back end messages. These are this is going to be anything I get from this server. So, for example, if I see this welcome, good luck, have fun string here, I know I only see this after I've authenticated. Um, so I'm just noting here, okay, I'm authenticated. I've, I'm doing some logging to, to standard out just to say, uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I provided a valid set of credentials. If the message starts with ping, I know that's at heartbeat command. So I want to say um, send back pong. Otherwise, we're going to parse out this message. Um, I won't bother going through this. This Twitch, Twitch method class is basically just pulling out the uh, the name of the user that sent the message, the channel it was sent in, as well as the message itself. 
And I say, if it starts with an exclamation mark, we know this is a bot command. So we'll do some further processing on it. Um, you might be thinking, hey, this is a lot of processing to do on every message. Uh, if there's hundreds of messages per second per channel, uh, you're right. <laughs> um, this this probably isn't the best way to do this. Uh, we, we probably want to put this off to um, maybe not parse all this out until we know it's a command we need all this information from. Um, again, this was kind of a learning project. Uh, this was actually still being developed. Um, so, you know, maybe a, a exercise for the reader. Um, I know this demo, this code's linked to in the um, uh, the the show notes on uh, Tanzu.tv. So, if you want to look at the code, maybe figure out a better way to do this. You know, there's some good homework for you. Cool. It's so, it's open source. It's open source. Open a pull request, right? <laughs> um, Cool, so moving right along with this logic here. So we get to this point, and I swear we're actually gonna see this running at some point. I'm not gonna just be talking to code this whole time. Um, but we get to this point and we know we're trying to invoke a command. We don't know if it exists or not. Um, but say I've entered, you know, exclamation mark, echo, hello world. It realizes it starts with an exclamation mark. I do a little bit more parsing to pull out the actual command name and, and the data that goes along with it. So in this case, command name would be echo, uh, data would be hello world. And then I have this command registry. Well, I've actually populated this when I created my bot here, where I've registered these commands and it takes in a string. And again, we'll look at this next, but a bot command. Uh, so it knows, okay, echo is a valid command. So it looks it up in that, uh, in this case, it's a hash map. So it says, okay, I know this echo key exists. Let's pull that command out. We'll call execute on it, uh, which returns a string. And we'll send that back to the Twitch server. Um, one other abstraction I want to point out. Uh, so I said bot command a few times, uh, a few times. And this was actually kind of a base class that's very bare bones. The idea being here, I could take, for example, my echo command and extend it extend the bot command class and override that execute command. So I don't have to know that it's particularly a echo object I'm working with or a, uh, you know, I have a couple other commands over here for rolling a dice. I, I don't need to know it's a dice uh, object I'm working with. I just know it's a bot command. It has an execute method, so I can just call execute on it. Cool. So we worked all the, the logic all the way down. We've said, we know we've got a, a bot command we know about. We've executed it, uh, we've sent it back. If we look at that echo bot command, by the way, the uh, execute command is tagging the user that sent it. So in this case, it's saying at and then username, space, and then whatever message they sent after exclamation mark echo. So I've talked a lot about code. Um, why don't we actually see this work here? So uh, actually, let me make sure. Okay, nope, if I can type, that'd be even better, wouldn't it? This is why I don't do too much live coding. Cool, so I've just set my environment variables to be my username and password since I don't want to show it on stream. Um, and then I'll explicitly set the Twitch channel environment variable to be the VM or Tandu um, channel name. And we'll start this up. And it should only take a second to get going here. So we'll see the application start up. It'll automatically create that Twitch bot connect to the Twitch server, authenticate, join the channel we're in right now. And we can see this is all output straight from the Twitch server. So again, if you've worked with a, a, the Twitch, or sorry, the IRC protocol, some of this formatting looks pretty similar. And we can see I've joined the VMware Tanzu channel, which if I flip over, and I say echo, hello world, fingers crossed, it'll echo back, hello world. Uh, we saw that we had the dice command, which will roll a dice. I rolled a two. Not very good. Um, but if you're in chat, you can you can play with this if you want. It. Uh, fingers crossed should work. Um, <clears throat> I should probably spell dice correctly. Um, yeah, this is my first time <laughs> using a keyboard. You're close. Um, I think we also have a counter command, which works here. There we go. Five and a five. Not too bad. There's a counter command, which uh, just counts up every time you you call it. 
Um, nothing too crazy here. Cool. So um, let's add a command real quick. And I, I had a few options I wanted to, to kind of float around in my head. I think I'm going to go with the shorter one, actually, because um, I don't know if you want to sit here and watch me write a, a command for the next 10, 15 minutes. But um, one of the ones I worked out was actually this uh, this gambling command, which everyone would get like 500 credits to start and you could type exclamation mark gamble and it would, you know, gamble uh, 10 credits. If you won, you got 10 credits. If you lost, you lost 10 credits. Uh, we're going to go a little bit simpler. Uh, we're going to flip a coin, which this will still show a couple things I want to show here. So like I said, I want to extend the bot command class. And what, uh, Oops, if I don't delete everything I need here, that'd also be great. So what do I need? I, I'm, I need to generate, you know, basically a, a random Boolean, right? We can say if I, if it's true, it's heads. If it's false, it's tails. Uh, so I know private, random, rand. Uh, we, we'll need a random number generator, um, which means, uh, well, actually what it means is the first I need to bring in the dependency. It also means I need to override the uh, default constructor. So I'll say public. Also my first time using a keyboard, by the way. Say public coin. Defer to the parent constructor for some reason. It's empty, so it doesn't matter. And it'll say this dot rand equals new random. And again, if I were a better programmer, I'd seed this properly or, or use a, a, you know, some uh, what are they like quantum number generator, but for our cases, this will be fine. You're supposed to use a room full of lava lamps or something, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not to go too far off, but I, um, I was very impressed. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons on uh, roll 20 and they have this whole big post on how the random number generator works. And it's like this quantum number generator. I, it worked. I, I didn't like it cause I rolled a lot of low numbers, but apparently it was, random so they say they actually just have a room full of people that actually roll dice that that could work you know i i don't know the uh, response time on that but <laughs> <laughs> um cool so we'll, we'll also implement the logic here uh by the way maybe someone in chat can correct me on this i still do the annotation for override because i learned that like eight ten years ago at this point i don't know if that's still a thing or not um but i do it and nothing breaks so We'll stick with it. Isn't that how programming works? You find something yeah. that kind of works and you just do that same thing every single time. Well, that that's the um, that's the, the beauty of this talk, right? Is most of this is it works. So I'm gonna show you how it works and then someone can correct me why I'm doing it wrong. And we'll learn together. Spencer uh, says that you're all good. Awesome. Awesome, thank you, Spencer. Um, so we'll, we'll override that execute method. And I know that took in a, a string and a Twitch message object. We'll call that T message. And what do we say we want to do? We want to uh, get a random Boolean. And if it was true, well, we said it was heads. Otherwise, it's tails. So uh, in this case, there's not a whole lot of logic uh, past that we got to implement. Honestly, we have all the the logic we need in place. So we just need to return what we're going to send back to the server. Um, we'll want to kind of, we'll probably want to tag whoever sent it. So we can say string format, and we'll say um, at some name heads and we'll fill it in with uh, T message dot get sent by. Again, this is uh, the, the Twitch message object is kind of parsing out all this information. So get sent by is returning the user who sent the message uh, that started this whole invocation process. And uh, if you're paying attention, you can probably guess what we'll do for tails. We'll say we'll return tails instead. Uh, I had a, what was this complaining about? Oh, I did this when I was practicing this too, by the way. Uh, we should probably return the string that we're formatting, shouldn't we? Cool. So let's uh, let's restart this. And by the way, you can see um, I'm logging this out uh, 
as it happens, but I actually got one of those ping messages I talked about. Uh, so we're responding to that automatically as heartbeats as well. And you can see also in the terminal, all the chat that's been going by, um, that's that's been going on while I've been typing this. So we'll reset the bot and um, uh, it won't work right now because the bot's down. Um, I was I was trying to beat you and I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> The, the upside is it only takes a couple, you know, a few seconds to come back up. I could probably make it faster if I want to skip all the uh, tests, which don't exist, because, again, probably not the best code base, but it works. So in this case, if we flip back to the chat, we can say coin, and, oh, I did this in practice, too. Uh, if anyone's paying attention, this is why it didn't work. We made the command. We didn't register the command. So this is this is how our bot knows about all the commands we have. This uh, is also how programming does. works. You it do is. something, you run it, it doesn't work, <laughs> and then you remember why it doesn't work. You go and do that other thing you were supposed to do. So I, I used to feel really bad when I did live demos and I would forget things. Uh, and so I was, um, I did a presentation where I was bookended by like it was something like Google and then Microsoft and either. And of course, they, theirs was flawless because you know they they have wonderful presenters. And then I go up there and I forget um, like the most basic thing of what I'm showing off. And you turn this into a learning experience, right? Um, you say, oh, this it didn't work because I didn't register the command. So I've called register command. We're going to say respond to anytime someone says exclamation mark coin. And then we'll pass it that coin uh, object. So one more time, we'll restart this. And once it's up, this time it should work and if it doesn't i'll then i'll i'll start to panic but until then so we're connected and you roll tails i'm gonna say i'm gonna roll a, a heads on this one look at that heads Cool. So we we have this really cool framework uh, kind of in place now for for building a Twitch bot, right? Um, I I thought this was kind of cool because I took this code base and I connected up to two hundred thousand viewer streams uh, just on my laptop, and I was like, for sure, this thing's gonna uh, fall over. There's no way it's gonna keep up with all this uh, because these streams were also events that were going on at the same time. Uh, so it was super high volume. Uh, super, super high volume chat. And this thing handled it great. Just my, my laptop here, which is, you know, I'm not gonna lie, show, showing its age lately. Um, but I was super impressed with that. So shout out to everyone working on Project Reactor and, and, and the reactive code base. Awesome work. So uh, what's next? So so we implemented a custom command. Um, I have my, my little notes over here so I don't lose track of what's going on. Um, Let's run this on Kubernetes. How about that? So if you've been uh, attending Tensu Tuesday lately, you probably saw um, uh, even just, I, I believe it was two weeks ago, uh, uh, there was a presentation on uh, build packs. And with Spring 2.3, there was this really awesome command added, not caps lock, I want tab, called uh, Spring Boots Build Image. And this will use cloud native build packs. In this case, I'll use the Paquetto build pack to build us a container image. Uh, it's gonna bring in the JVM. It's gonna bring in all our dependencies. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about this while it's running. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tag this as well, uh, just so I can push this up to Docker Hub. So I'm just tagging this with my uh, Docker Hub username and the, the image name here. So what we're gonna see is it's gonna take a builder image, um, build our code for us, uh, build a container off of a, a known good base image. Um, and the the really cool part is as that base image updates, so say there's a security vulnerability that gets patched in uh, the JVM, which is pretty important. Um, as I rebuild my application, it's going to bring in those new versions of the JVM or, or any other dependency I have. Um, so this is a lot less work for me to do. I don't have to manage a Docker file. Um, I don't have to do this. I just have to do uh, you know, Maven Spring Boot build image. 
if we can see it's going through, it's building our container image, um, adding a bunch of labels. And on the other end, it's spit out uh, Brian M. McLean slash reactive dash bot dash framework colon latest, which will also push up to Docker Hub and pray my internet doesn't fall over because I don't have the greatest internet here while it uploads 20 megabytes. Um, I debated doing this, but I figured it takes about 10 seconds. Um, so while that's doing that, let's take a look at our deployment YAML that we're going to use. Uh, because there's a uh, surprise in here. Because <laughs> I like surprises. Uh, Deploy.yaml. Now you haven't got your uh, API key in there, do you? I don't, and we'll see why. All right. Um, so I have two things I'm deploying here. I have a deployment, um, which looks pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm just pointing to that image. Um, I'm telling it uh, all the information it needs to know, though, my API key, my username, and the channel I want to join to uh, through these environment variables in my deployment YAML. For the channel name, I'm just setting it straight in here. But for the OAuth token and for the, uh, the nickname, I'm actually pulling this from a secret. Um, and this is templated as I'm pulling this up, so don't worry. Uh, but the secret, again, nothing super fancy here. I have two, uh, two keys, um, you know, just base64 encode the values, plop them in. Uh, and then I have it sitting elsewhere on my file system. Uh, maybe not in the best place, but I can apply that secret. And then our deployment will pull that as we're, uh, as we're deploying our application. The other thing I'm creating is a service to, uh, to expose this application. Uh, and I want to point out a couple things here. So I'm going to give it the, uh, the label of app. So the, the, the label with the key app and the value react bot framework. And, uh, I'm going to name the, uh, the port I'm going to expose here. I'm doing this because ahead of time, I've also deployed the Prometheus, um, operator helm chart. Uh, as well as the Grafana Helm chart. And the Prometheus operator expects, uh, amongst other things, it expects these service monitors to tell it how to gather metrics from different things running on uh, your Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, I'm saying look for a service with the label that has the key app and the, the value bot, uh, React to bot framework. And then connect to the endpoint named HTTP traffic, which I've defined up here. That's where I, that's why I gave it that name. Um, so it's going to connect to this service on port 8080. And it's going to connect to the endpoint or the path slash actuator slash Prometheus. And we'll take a look at this as this is live, but this is how uh, we're exposing all the metrics from our application. So let's apply this. And down here, we'll just watch... Um, there's nothing super exciting going down on the bottom. I know it's probably a little small to see, but it's just watching all the pods as they spin up um, down here on the bottom. And as this spawns up, we'll get ready to view the logs. Um, this is just running on Minikube on my machine, uh, which is why it's taking a little bit longer to pull down the, the image. Again, I don't have the best internet where I'm at, so um, you know, takes a little bit to pull down. Uh, but we should see this come up. Yep, so the container's running. If we look at the logs, um, we can see the application starting up just as we expected with, uh, you know, running any Java application. Um, someone was asking, how did the deployment folder, uh, how did the deployment folder come? Um, so this is just where I'm storing. Uh, I, I wrote this all myself. Um, I believe it was actually Brian Lyles that did a really good presentation um, several weeks back on specifically around things like YAML and, and, and how to manage uh, things like deployment YAMLs and all that. Uh, Paul, you can keep me honest if, if that's true, but I remember yeah, that I think, presentation I being think awesome. you're right. He did a, well, I guess it was quite a few episodes ago now. Maybe it six was a little ago. bit ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so everything I showed in here, I can bring it back up. It was uh, in June. It was in June. So, yeah. Which feels and, and we're still on March 196. Exactly. So. <laughs> I was gonna say it simultaneously feels uh, like it was last week and then three years ago. So yep, that's the way um, time works in the Jer Jer uh, Jerry Berry. No, what's that uh, from? Never mind. <laughs> oh. um, 
but point being this this specifically this yaml was all just kind of written um i just wrote this out i'd say by hand but i'll be honest i did what probably 90 percent of people do if not 100 percent of people do and i found one that works elsewhere and then i filled in all the the blanks with my stuff um but this wasn't generated by anything this wasn't anything specific to to spring or to maven um this was just something i, I put together um so if we flip back to the logs, um, again, I'm just looking at the logs from the container I spun up. We can see it's already connected. So if I jump back to the chat here and I say, um, echo hello from a container. And I look at the logs, we can see that the container running our application is showing the, uh, the chat here. Um, I'm gonna do one other echo command and this is just because I'm populating data for something later in the demo, which is great. Um, hello again. Cool. So builder bot, packaged it, running it. Um, let's talk about metrics. Um, so I've done a few things here. Uh, and this is mostly because this is something I've been diving into on my own. And I, I recently wrote about on the uh, uh, developers, the, the Tansy Developers uh, Center. And um, I thought it was actually really cool. Let me close out some of this code I'm not using here. So we've done a few things when it comes to metrics. Um, if you're familiar with uh, the actuator in Spring Boot, uh, that was the quickest thing to get working here. I, I brought in the actuator uh, dependency, the, the starter, and I was getting metrics from the JVM from my application, um, just kind of automatic uh, auto magically i think is the word the official word there um there's also some awesome things on uh liveliness and readiness endpoints and and how to customize those the other thing i did was i included this micrometer registry prometheus dependency and this is what's going to take all the metrics that we expose from um from the actuator all my custom metrics that i that we're going to show here in a second and expose it in a way that Prometheus knows how to parse. And in fact, um, we'll take a look at that as well. I added a few custom commands here. So I'm a little limited on screen real estate, so I'm trying to jump around a little bit. Um, if I scroll all the way back to the top and I look at uh, my constructor for my, my Twitch bot, I created this counter here, which is just kind of stored, um, you know, as a private variable in the um, in the in the in the class called total uh, bot commands counter. And the other thing I'm doing is every time I register a command, I also make a new counter and I store that in another hash map. So this gets created automatically for every command that I'm registering. Um, so you may notice when I created that coin command, I didn't um, create any counters. I didn't create any um, you know, any, any metrics to gather around it. I just created the bot command. Uh, and then we're, we're building a counter, giving it a name of bot command underscore command name underscore counter, um, uh, giving it a description and we're registering it to the global registry. Um, again, this might be something that might not be, uh, hundred percent the best way to do it. Um, you know, this is something I've, I've been learning very recently as well. So, um, we're learning together, but again, it works. So, uh, that's the first step to, to good code, right? Is making it work and then making it good. Um, at least I think so. So that means if we go back to our application, um, I'm just exiting out of the logs here. So the bot's still running in the background. And since I'm running on Minikube, I can do this cool little command where I can get the service name. I can say Minikube service, service name, uh, it's going to open up my browser to a 404. That's fine. I don't have a, uh, a landing page, uh, you know, route registered to this. So that's expected. And I'm going to go to slash actuator slash Prometheus, if I spelled it right. And these are uh, just a mountain uh, collection of metrics. Some of these are provided from the actuator. Um, some I've enabled explicitly um, you know, I mentioned when I made my subscription to the Flux, I, I did that dot uh, metrics method call, which instrumented some metrics. Um, I enabled uh, some metrics around the scheduler as well. So uh, these were all kind of gathered in one place for Prometheus to gather. 
And the cool thing I can do is I can say, uh, you know, command F for bot command total counter. And we can see that we've had a, um, sorry, that is the wrong total. Let's look through this, where are we at here? Yes, total counter. It's gathering the total number of uh, commands that we've invoked. If I look at coin, because I see some people have been using the coin here, I'm a little concerned, I'm not gonna lie, because that doesn't match up. Um, because it says we've only invoked this twice. Maybe I gotta, oh, okay, if I refresh, then it's up to six, so that's why it wasn't correct. So probably some caching stuff there. Um, so we can see we've invoked the, the coin command six times. So these are all being presented in a way that Prometheus can gather. And if I go to Prometheus, um, I'll show you the script here. It's just a little helper, helper script I have. Um, Prometheus port forward. This is just uh, forwarding my local port 9090 to Prometheus running on Minikube. Um, so I'll run that. Bring up my browser, and if I get a local host, 9090. I so I, I see people checking if the uh, the um, coin command was working. I'm not saying I, I messed up the code, but I did have this happen to me when I was testing it, where I got about 13 tails in a row. But um, it could be broken. Let me let me try it. Tails. All right. Well, keep trying it. See see how it works. Um, in the meantime, we'll look at the uh, uh, what Prometheus has gathered here. So if we look at the same uh, metric command that we we're looking at, see, there's a heads. We got a heads in the chat. Um, I was like, I, I didn't think I messed it up. It was a it was a random number generator. Um, Let's look at specifically the number of times the uh, coin command was, was invoked because that's been happening a you know, fair amount. If we look at the graph, we can see over time we've had more and more invoked over time. It uh, looks like it's up to uh, 11 right now. Um, keep in mind, Prometheus, uh, the Prometheus operator by default is scraping this, I think, every 30 seconds out of the box. So there might be some lag on this, but... Um, but, uh, yeah, so... So it's, it's gathering these metrics from our application. Um, it's gathering even metrics from the JVM. Uh, what's, a, what's a good one to look at here? Um, how about memory used in bytes? That, that seems interesting. So we can see it's broken down to all the, uh, the different components of the uh, JVM memory usage. Um, so, so just providing that service monitor um, object to the Prometheus operator uh, it's already gathering all these metrics from, from our application. Uh, and in fact, if you're curious on how that uh, Prometheus operator was deployed, um, these scripts are all in GitHub as well if you want to take a look at it. Um, but literally, I, I added the Bitnami um, Helm repo. I did Helm install Prometheus, uh, Prometheus, or Bitnami slash Prometheus operator, and that's what I got out of the box. So between that and that service monitor that I, I created in my deployment YAML um, got me a working uh, monitoring for my application, which I thought was pretty cool. So what goes better with Prometheus than Grafana? Um, at least I swear every time I read anything about Prometheus, I always see something about Grafana. So we're going to look at that as well. So let's exit that port forge because I'm done with that. And... Um, We'll take a look. Uh, again, I'll show you what this helper script is. This is uh, getting the password that the uh, Grafana Helm chart generates and then porting, uh, forwarding port 3000 for my machine into Minikube. So if we run that, uh, there's a password. Again, this is all on my machine. It's I, You're seeing the password, but it's fine. And we bring back up the browser, go to port 3000 we'll log in admin and that password that I just got cool so 
we got Grafana running. Uh, we got two problems. We don't have any dashboards and we don't have any dashboards because we don't have any data sources. And I was actually really impressed with how easy it was to add um, Prometheus as a data source to this. So literally just going into uh, configuration, uh, data sources, add data source, and then choosing Prometheus. Um, there's a lot of options that it, it provides that you can uh, fill in here if you need uh, basic authentication, if you need a TLS certificate. Um, I don't like what's happening in the chat there. Someone's trying to get my password file. Um, <laughs> but uh, in our case, we just need to <laughs> provide the, uh, the URL here. Um, there was some chat if, if there were some security issues with this, with this bot, by the way, before we presented, but, um, we'll persevere. I figured I would try some stuff that probably wouldn't work. <laughs> well, I mean, worst case, what if that didn't work, you're getting the password file in a container. Right. So not too bad. Um, yes, I can drop the, the code in, uh, the link to the code here. It's uh, also in the show notes, but. Let me drop it in the chat here real quick. Um, what's my GitHub name? Reactive Bot Framework. And I'll drop this in the chat here. So there's a there's the link to the code. Um, again, on, on the uh, Tanzi.tv uh, entry for this episode, I think I added it earlier today to link to the code. Um, but yeah, check it out again. I think there's probably 800 things that can be improved upon, but it's been, it's been interesting so far. Um, so adding, so adding this data source, uh, in Grafana for Prometheus, um, a lot of options, but I'm just providing the internal DNS name for the service in front of Prometheus here. So this is actually using, um, the internal DNS, uh, in, in, uh, my Kubernetes cluster, um, so it's the service name dot, uh, default, which is the namespace dot SVC dot cluster dot local. Um, I should implement a bot command to print the link to the source. That would be really smart. Uh, wish I would have thought of that. Um, cool. So we will add this data source. Um, that's the only, uh, parameter we need. We'll say save and test and we see a lot of green. So. That is groovy. Um, something I learned, because I'm pretty, I'll, I'll admit, I'm pretty new to Grafana. On the Grafana website, there's like 8 trillion different community built dashboards for basically anything you can think of. Um, at least that's that's been my experience. Um, and in this case, I found this really cool uh, JVM dashboard, uh, specifically for metrics from Micrometer. And what it does is it gives you this ID for the board. In this case, it's 4701. So I'll copy that. If I jump back into my Grafana instance and I go to manage my dashboards, I can just click import, enter that ID under import from grafana.com. And it's just gonna ask me for a data source at this point. And since I only have one, I'll just tell it to use my Prometheus data source clicking import and I will drill down a little bit because this is like a 24 hour window. If I zoom, zoom into about 30 minutes, we can see these are metrics gathered from our application all loaded into this dashboard automatically. So we can see the uptime, it's been about 15 minutes, uh, not a lot of heap used. Um, we can see the duration of the request, both the average and the max. And there's a lot of metrics it's pulling out and visualizing here. You know, if you just sc uh, scroll through all this, um, there's a lot of stuff it's pulling through. Um, but I really wanna see something specific to my application. So I'm going to have a bit of an ego on this and say, I think I wanna show all my bot commands across the entire top of this dashboard. So I'm gonna add a new panel and you're greeted with this screen here. If, if you're new to Grafana, this was like, I looked at this, I was like, I don't know what's happening. Um, I, I kinda wanna give up already, but uh, I was actually, about to say, that's usually the point where I'm like, uh, close it, I'll go do something yeah. else. <laughs> well, I saw things like PromQL queries and like, right. I don't even know what that, I've never heard of that. Um, but I did the thing that I always do and I just kept hitting it with a hammer and uh, I figured out something. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to give this a this panel a t uh, title of 
total bot commands. And if you go down here, where it's asking for a, uh, a, qu a query, if you just start typing, it's gonna start uh, auto-populating all the metrics that it knows about, kind of like we saw in, um, in Prometheus. So if I say bot command total, uh, and then I can see it auto-completed uh, total counter total, which is all of our commands that we've uh, invoked through the entire demo that we've seen here, and I say shift enter, uh, we're going to see kind of this stair step here. It, it, this is uh, the total count, uh, which is cool, but not mega interesting. Like, um, I probably am more interested in, say, uh, spikes in a lot of usage of my bot. So I can kind of correlate this to, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a huge spike in uh, latency in my, in my request, but it's because I started getting like 800 bot requests per second. And... Uh, this is where Grafana actually really held my hand because I immediately got yelled at down here. And it says uh, metric bot command, yada, 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 is a counter. Um, maybe you wanna surround this with a function called rate. And I said, that sounds interesting. And I all I did was I clicked on that. And it turns out what the rate function does is it looks at the rate of change in that, that interval. So by default, it's saying, look at the rate of change over five minute intervals. Uh, and now what I'm looking at is something a little bit closer to what's probably more interesting, which is uh, the f the spikes in usage of the bot. So maybe this bot sits here and does nothing for 13 hours, but I can see my memory slowly go going up. That probably tells me it's it's something in how I'm reading the chat rather than handling metrics, for example. Um, so there, uh, this was actually really cool to, to see how... Um, how easy this was to, to implement. If I click apply, boom, I got my my graph kind of pasted across the top third of this this uh, dashboard because, uh, again, a little bit of an ego on this apparently. Um, so I think that's about all I had prepared today. We're, we're slightly over the hour, but um, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully, I know this wasn't like a super deep dive into one specific thing um, with, you know, the, the absolute guru of, uh, of that topic, um, which I know is kind of a big shift after seeing people like uh, Josh Long, Spencer Gibb, uh, Mario Gray, uh, Deshaun Carter. I know Tiffany was on a, an episode before. She was going to be on one again. Uh, Paul, you presented, you know, these are all people that, you know, I, I walk away from their talks and think like, wow, that's that was so cool. I, I want to go build something with that or I want to do something with what I just learned. I know this was a little different, um, but hopefully this was kind of a cool culmination of a few different presentations over the last few months of um, what we've seen here on Tanzu Tuesday. Um, something I thought was kind of fun to do and uh, hopefully y'all had a good time. Yeah, this was, this was fantastic. Here, let me bring my camera up. Do you want to? Sure. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Do you want to unshare? I mean, you can yeah. keep sharing if you want. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is really good. I, I, I like the fact that it wasn't really like super scripted. It wasn't something you'd done a bunch of times, you know, um, Certainly when folks like Josh do stuff, you know, they're so good and so smooth and like key keyboard perfect, but they've probably done it a few more times than they have. <laughs> so I, well, I really like the, the rawness of it and the fact that you sort of taken a problem that's very relevant to the stream itself and looked at solving that. I think that's, that's really cool. And, I, you know, I, one thing I've been wanting to do is maybe look for some kind of app that we can get folks to like build on top of just as part of the stream. Yeah. Um, and so maybe this or something like this would be something we can get some other folks to, Hey, I'm going to implement like a, like we're talking about like a gambling command. Like I'm going to implement like a, a simple, like I was going to say two up. Do you have the game two up in America or is that an Australian thing? I don't, Recall, I don't know about you, Bob, but is there another way you could refer to it that maybe uh, we would understand? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll I'll Google it in a, in a second when you guys when you two start talking a bit. I'll Google it and see if uh, so I don't even fully remember the rules, but it's basically you have two coins and you flip them, and I don't remember the rest. But anyway, sounds great. Yeah, so like we could have people impl implement a couple of different commands be fun well it's um, it's almost like the 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 tech drinking game if you will so like in our chat if depending on how long you've been watching you'll know 
kind of like some side games that are happening or whatnot. And, exactly. uh, and I love it. I think it's great. I think and it's something that builds community. And, uh, you know, if it's one of those things where it's like every time Bob makes a, a random noise with his mouth, you know, or, uh, <laughs> or Tiffany says how, you know, she lives in Seattle or, you know, Paul, Paul uses his Canadian accent, you know, something that like people can then type it in and then it becomes a thing. So, yeah, I love that like kind of side game that can be created and developed by our community thing. That's great. It's really great. Well, cool. And by the way, I, I appreciate you, uh, the choice of word of raw and not, um, bad. Um, <laughs> because I agree, <laughs> you know, that's, that's why I brought up all those people. Cause like, I, I, you know, I'm sure they could, you know, even if they're presenting for the first time, it, you know, they're so good. I, I, just well, assume Spencer, it's something that's Spencer said times. that this was <laughs> awesome. Well, well done. And Spencer's not going to lie to you at all. That's not a, there's not a lying bone in his body. So, <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate that. And so, yeah. So, and, and now, and now Spencer, uh, I mean, not Spencer, um, Java grunt, Deshaun just got Deshaun, on. So yeah. this is great. So yeah. Deshaun, <laughs> you have been mentioned many times. You might want to watch this on replay another time, but, uh, no, this was, this was great. And there's, there's no need to put anything no asterisks. It was great. So we are <laughs> very happy with this yeah. episode. Well, I, I was going to get really mad because I thought the random wasn't working, but it turns out it actually is working. And sometimes that's how random works. You just get six in a row. See, that's, that's why I mentioned that, uh, that D and D site, because I swear their random number generator doesn't work because I, for whatever reason, I keep rolling ones. It must be broken. Not in my luck. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Here's where I learned that random is a very scary thing we were <laughs> have you ever heard of the game it's a like a casino game called kino is that like two up yeah <laughs> i see what you do this guy this guy yeah. and so one of the one of the games it's like a almost like a bingo kind of type thing right so numbers come up and you pick a bunch of numbers and if they come up you tick them off and one of the things is you can simply call it odds or evens and you basically if you're right you double your money and so we had this thing we would sit at the pub and like put a dollar on at a time like no no real money and if we lost we would double our bet right because eventually you would win and you'd win the double of the double and the way the numbers work anyway we got up to like 500 and something dollars through one bad run. And the, the goal was you, you'd always pick evens, right? Mm -hmm. And you'd stay on the evens run until an even showed up. Because if you started switching it up, then, right, then you know, if it yeah, yeah. made a difference, but it felt scarier. <laughs> and so we hit like 500 something. So that was like $1, $2, $4, $8, kind of going all up. And so we were at $500, which meant we had bet every increment on the way up to $500. Yeah, and we were, at that point we were just playing a game of chicken with ourselves of like when do we? When <laughs> yeah, do we when give are you going to stop? <laughs> when are we going to like? How much money are we going to sink into this? And thankfully, that's about when it paid off. But we, we never played that game ever again. No, yes, <laughs> that uh, that that beats my um, my one casino story where I went for a weekend with my brother and uh, I brought like fifty bucks. I was like, okay, this is all I'm spending. Uh, we were there, it was like Friday night through Sunday night or something like that. And I lost all my money by Friday night. So yep. <laughs> I just watched for the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Australia, just about, every, just about every pub has um, the slot machines. They have Kino mm -hmm. and they have horse and dog racing. And so it's uh, pretty common to sit there drinking beers and just like, doing super low dollar amount bets on like the horses or something yeah. just to help pass the time. Absolutely. Uh, the trick Having is to snacks. not trick yourself into making high stake bets. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're talking Australian dollars. Oh, well that's yeah. Australian <laughs> okay, pesos. When, yeah. When you lived there, uh, AUS were AUDs were, t they were nothing. They were pennies on the dollar. I remember, I remember when I first went to Australia, I was like 20. And so, which was like four years ago, Wink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like my first reality of like, oh, our money actually is worth something because everywhere else, you know, it's like it was, it was never worth as much as where you went. So it was kind of cool. Yeah. I went was down it? to, uh, uh, to Hungry Jack's and I had all yeah. the Hungry Jack Whoppers I could handle. I was going to say, oh, is it yeah. Hungry Jack's just Burger King? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I remember they actually started. Exploding 
rebranding a bunch of them to Burger King. So I guess they finally got the um, trademark, whatever trademark. Yeah, um, I just learned so that like is, a week ago. Yeah, so like in Sydney, you'll see some are Burger King, some are Hungry mm -hmm. Jacks. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And then of course <laughs> McDonald's is McDougal's. It's all right. McDougal's. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. They've got the golden arcs. We got the golden arcs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this was great. Uh, we've got, uh, like I said, uh, uh, Deshaun's pinging in now, so we're he, he's he's up to speed on everything. He's going to watch the the beginning of the show. Uh, I don't know if uh, our good friend Sweet Killer Nine made it on, but um, I didn't hopefully... see him. I didn't see him either, but that's all right. We appreciate everyone that is here. Thank you so much for watching. Brian, this was great. We're yeah, so happy to have had you on this side. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot of fun. We'll have you call again. Right. <laughs> and great. Uh, people out there, we're expecting one of you to do a pull request to implement the the source uh, command to the bot. <laughs> that's right. And if we get that, then maybe next uh, stream we'll uh, have a quick aside and show it off. Well, and next week we have Tiffany, who's back back hosting but also she'll be presenting so it'll be That's back right. to just me yes. and paul hosting and tiffany will be our guest and so yeah we're very excited for that yeah and uh, i believe fresh off she'll of her... be doing an extended uh edition uh, a director's cut of her right. uh, spring talk so if yes, you right. were unable to attend uh the or you only saw the 25 minute version or or you only saw the short version you want to see a lot more of her hit us up mm -hmm. next tuesday I like the idea. Knows. The, yeah, the director version. I like yeah. that. Well, everyone knows that's the that's the proper cut. It's like Blade Runner, right? You watch the director's yeah. cut. It's the one that the director <laughs> wanted. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all. Take care of yourselves. Uh, hopefully you all can breathe uh, at some point in time. And we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.